All right, I was sent an email today, and I thought it was deserved a full video just on this subject. And let me read the uh, email question. And this is from Anton. I don't know Anton. It's, I, I guess he just uh, is somebody who follows me on YouTube. But anyway, Mr. Lemon, I wanted to ask you about your process of selecting a subject matter and composition for your sculptures. Sculpture is a hobby for me. I work on it in my spare time, and I it always takes a very long time to finish a piece. Because of that, it is always very difficult for me to decide on the piece before I even start. I don't want to devote that much time to something that will let take oh good comp uh, who, that will lack good composition, meaning, etc. In the end. I'm not sure what that means, but anyway, if you do not mind sharing, what is your process of visualizing the end result? Do you think it's possible to make any subject matter look interesting? And it's just a matter of compo composing it correctly? Thank you, Anton. All right. This is a qu question I, I get quite often. And... Uh, I'll try to answer it this way. When I first started sculpting back in high school, back in 1965, 64, 65, um, I took a ceramics class and uh, the teacher was exasperated with me because I couldn't throw a pot to save my neck. So he suggested I uh, try sculpting and uh, I sculpted three witches from Macbeth <laughs> and made a vase out of them. You put flowers in their mouth. I sculpted Adam being created. Don't ask me why. Um, I created a Icar Icarus who flew too close to the sun. I cr created him out of a coat hanger, burlap, and plaster and paint. I, I don't know what caught the eye of somebody who came to the school and looked at this uh, work of mine, but it, it caused them to want to give me a scholarship in art uh, that year. My grades were too low to uh, get the scholarship, uh, so I joined the Navy. And I did a lot of drawing uh, in school. Did never thought I'd be a sculptor. Uh, the books that uh, I read back then, uh, when I was a kid in my basement uh, room, in my parents' house, were uh, two books that inspired me to try sculpting because they were so vividly written that uh, I mean these these two gentlemen that wrote these two books uh, were artists in the way they use their words to create pictures in your mind. Uh, the first book that I read was called The Agony and the Ecstasy, and it was by Irving Stone. The uh, second book was Naked Came I by uh, a novel of Rodin. It's a story about August Rodin uh, by David Wiese. Like Anton said, he starts doing these things and spending a lot of time on them because uh, uh, it, it just takes him so much time. It's, he does it part-time while he's working full-time or at a, at a job. And that's basically the way I started. Um, my first pieces took me six or seven months to create and sometimes a year because I was very, very slow. I was lucky to have an uncle, a distant uncle, who lived near my place. And uh, I used to go over with my clays to his studio, and he'd be working on a 30-foot tall bucking horse piece for some state capital. And uh, he would 
show me what I was doing wrong. Uh, it, it it was my internet back then. That's the only we didn't have internet to go on to and 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 watch other sculptors work. But <clears throat> he helped me a lot to see composition and uh, form. Composition is the hardest part. You really have to uh, work at it. You have to eventually get to a point where it's just natural. Uh, you look at the, the full round. I mean, if you watch me sculpting something, uh, usually I, I'm constantly turning it to look at it. And that's what I'm doing is reviewing my composition. There's no quick learning. It takes time and lots and lots and lots of practice. I eventually took that seven months, eight months to sculpt something and got it down to a month. And sometimes I can even do it in a couple of weeks. Um, it just depends on the inspiration and uh, how much fun I'm having with the piece. Lately, it's harder because of my eyes and because of a numbness in my hand that uh, has been with me for oh, probably about uh, close to nine years. These uh, two fingers, the thumb and finger, are semi-numb and it makes it painful to sculpt. I uh, actually went blind a couple of years ago in my right eye. Um, and had to have shots to uh, get it cleared up, but I still have problems with both eyes, and that's why I use my magnifiers. So where do I get my inspiration? Well, a lot of it has to do with just being aware of what's going around on around you, reading, listening to books on uh, audio, I'm listening to one now called The Big Sky, and it was by Guthrie. It was uh, written back in the 30s. About, it's amazing. It's an amazing story. They made a movie which was very, very different than the book, but it was a good book, a um, good movie. I've watched it quite a few times called The Big Sky with Kirk Douglas and when he was young. Anyway, it was movies like that that inspired me to do Western art and also an experience I had with my grandmother. I remember when I was a kid and uh, I was just sitting in the back seat of uh, my dad's 50 Chevy. And we were going up to the High Uinta Mountains to a meadow that uh, my grandmother, Hilda Lemon, grew up in. Uh, she grew up in a cabin, a one-room cabin up there, and it was still standing. They were getting ready to tear it apart, though, because they were getting ready to put a freeway through that valley. So anyway, we went uh, to that cabin with Grandpa and Grandma, and... Uh, I can remember the smell of the cabin, the uh, musty smell of damp earth and rotting timbers. And there was a window, there was one window in that cabin. And my grandmother was standing at the window and she motioned me to come over and take a look. And I went over to the window and she pointed out to the, the far, uh, line of trees on the edge of the uh, meadow and she told me how she had watched the Ute Indians as they'd walk through those woods those trees on their way uh, on their hunting parties uh, hunting for food and every once in a while they'd come up to the cabin and uh, ask for food and they always gave them food She told me about sleeping at night in that cabin and hearing the creak, creaking wood on the roof, the uh, wood sh shingles, 
um, how they would creak under the weight of a mountain lion walking along the uh, roof and how all her brothers and sisters would lay there in bed scared that the mountain lion might fall through. I think my dad had that same experience in the house in Canis, Utah when he was a kid. Anyway, those type of things inspired me to do Western art. Also, back in the 50s, when I was growing up, I was born in 45, um, there were a lot of Westerns. It was the, Westerns were king. I mean, you, know, you had Gene Autry, Roy Rogers, and, and then all the movies you know, about the West on uh, the big screen. And it inspired me, uh, along with my grandmother's story, to get into sculpting of Native Americans and uh, mountain men and cowboys. I Another reason I got such low grades in school is because I uh, spent my time drawing Indians when I should have been listening to the teacher. I had a teacher back in sixth grade, Mrs. Waller was her name. And she was telling us one time about how she was taken to a Wild West show by her dad back in the early 1900s. And that's where she saw Buffalo Bill. And stories like that, things I've grown up with are what inspire me now. So Anton, I hope that answers your question. I hope it answers the questions that might be in other people's minds. I know it's a, I rambled on, but I wanted to answer the question the best I could. And the only way I could do that is give my life experience and how I came to the point where I am now. Would I do it over again? I don't know. There's better ways of making a living. It really does come down to being lucky. You know, like having the right people see your work. Uh, you have to be a bit of a promoter. I'm not much of a promoter myself. You have to be good at business. I'm terrible at business. And I would suggest going to college, take economics and learn to be a person who can take care of their finances better than I did. It, there's a lot more to being an artist than just uh, having talent. I'll probably never be really known in this world. And my artwork may never really sell until after I'm gone. Um, and those years are starting to dwindle down now. I accept what I am and how I've gotten here. I've accepted my life. I accept my anim, anim, not being known. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I got a few people who follow me on YouTube and I'd probably have a lot more if you guys would like and subscribe. If you like my videos. Anyway, all right, I do have instructional videos, nine of them, and uh, you can take a review of each one in my uh, link below this video. Um, I put my 56 years of experience and uh, learning different tricks and hacks that make sculpting a little easier. In those videos, I also show you how to quickly put something together. All right, I'm gonna let you go now and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, it'll probably be Wednesday before I come back because I've gotta do a lot of uh, stuff tomorrow that I've been putting off. And um, I'll talk to you guys uh, and see you guys next time. Thanks for the question, Anton. Good night, everybody. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. 
Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.